사랑하는 성도님들 우리를 너무나도 사랑하시는 주님의 사랑을 생각하며 함께 주님 생각 찬양 드립니다 날마다 하늘을 봐요 날마다 하늘을 봐요 낮엔 꽃들이 밤에 별들이 꽃들이 밤에 별들이 주님의 따사로운 사랑 주님의 따사로운 사랑 
손 잡아주리라 내손 잡아주리라 내가 너를 지명하여 불렀다 내가 너를 지명하여 불렀다니 너는 내 것이라 내 것이라 너의 하나님이라 내 것이라 너의 하나님이라 내가 너를 보배롭고 존귀하게 함께 기도하시고 말씀을 증거해 주시는 사랑하는 친구들을 위해서 기도하시겠습니다. 할렐루야 사랑의 아버지 감사드립니다. 사랑의 아버지 하나님 감사합니다. 목자님의 귀하신 영혼들이 새 예루살렘을 소망하며 아버지 앞에 신령과 진정으로 예배를 드립니다. 우리의 예배를 통하여 영광 홀로 받도 없어서 우리 주 예수 그리스도의 이름으로 기도하옵나이다. 아멘. 아멘. Starting with the solemn prayer, let's offer up the Sunday evening service to Father God. Have this heart in yourselves, the heart of Jesus Christ. Let's sing together hymn number 204.
Amen. 합심으로 몇 가지 기도하겠습니다. Congregation prayer. First, let's pray for our beloved senior pastor. 경비하게 섭리가 마무리가 되어져가는 이 마지막 때에 귀한 목자를 이 땅에 보내주시고 불가능이 없는 믿음과 생명 다한 순종으로 아버지 하나님의 뜻만을 온전히 이루 오셨습니다. 재창조의 권능 백의 완성을 이루셔서 우리 만민에게 주신 민족 복음화 세계 선교 대성년을 건축하며 새 예루살렘 성을 가득 채워 아버지 앞에 무한 영광과 찬송만 올려드리기를 원합니다. 영광의 부활의 날을 신속히 맞이할 수 있도록 아버지 하나님 영광 받으옵소서 감사를 드리옵고 우리 주 예수 그리스도의 이름으로 기도하옵나이다. 아멘. 아멘. 대성전 건축을 위해서 Let's pray for the construction of the Grand Sanctuary. 광주요 인간 경작의 승리의 상징물인 아름다운 대성전을 이루어서 만왕의 왕으로 영광의 구름을 타고 우리를 데리러 오실 재림의 주님을 맞이할 수 있는 복된 만민의 성도들 다 되게 하여 주옵소서. 목자님께서 무수한 금식과 불같은 기도로 풀어주신 이 성결의 모금을 통하여 마음의 성전도 아름답게 이루어갈 수 있도록 역사하여 주옵소서 감사합니다 아버지 하나님 성전의 모든 과정도 형통하게 인도하시고 영광을 홀로 받으옵소서 우리 주 예수 그리스도의 이름으로 기도하옵나이다 아멘, 아멘. 말씀을 증거해 주실 당 회장 직무대행 이수진 목사님과 우리 받기 위해 기도하신 다음 Let's pray for the acting senior pastor and for the service and then pastor in so will pray for the service on behalf of us. 사랑의 아버지 하나님 목자님의 마음과 심장으로 권능의 불의 말씀을 선포하실 당 회장 직무대행 이수진 목사님 불 같은 권능의 말씀을 통해서 우리의 혼과 영과 및 관절과 골수가 찔러 쪼개지며 근본의 악들을 발견하여 변화와 생명으로 나아질 수 있는 귀한 예배가 되게 하여 주옵소서 전국 및전 세계에서 함께 예배에 동참하고 있는 모든 성도들에게도 동일한 은혜와 감동과 축복으로만 역사해 주시기를 원하옵고 감사를 드리오며 우리 주 예수 그리스도의 이름으로 기도하옵나이다. 아멘. Father God of love, thank you for protecting us uh, in the grace and the fullness that we received during the Easter. We are uh, attending this worship service. Thank you. God's love was manifested in us this way, that God sent His only begotten Son to us so that it is the love of God to save us through His Son and our Lord obey to the point of death and also we thank the Holy Spirit for His love the Bible says that there's no greater joy than in me to see my so, so that mommy members will live in the truth Father, uh, the senior, our shepherd has guided us and he has led us to love God first and with that love, our acting pastor has helped us discover and cast off our sins through the lectures on Job. And when we repent, we can recover His grace. He, she emphasized, let us, as we saw her praising with all our heart, all of us were moved and inspired. Thank you for that grace. And our, uh, when Mary Magdalene witnessed the Lord's resurrection, she testified to the resurrection with all her, his life. Let all of us testify to the shepherd's power. She delivers a message also today. Fill her with the inspiration and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Please let us engrave this message, which is sweeter than honey, deep on our heart. Also, please uh, bless the presider of service and also joyfully accept the praise and performance of Shalom Kari and Orchestra. Joyfully accept the special praise from Senior Dignity Unicam. Please remember all the MAMI members who are joining the service through internet, GCN, etc. Give them great grace. Pour down your grace. Please remember all the helping hands for the service and pay them back with the heavenly rewards and blessings on this earth. Thank you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
The scripture for today's message is Job chapter 16, verses 16 through 22. Uh, my face is flushed from weeping, and deep darkness is on my eyelids. Although there is no violence in my hands, and my prayer is pure, O earth, do not cover my blood, and let there be no resting place for my cry. Even now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and my advocate is on high. My friends are my scoffers, and my eye weeps to God. O oh, that a man might plead with God as a man with his neighbor, for when a few years are passed, I shall go the way of no return. My spirit is broken, my days are extinguished, the grave is ready for me, surely mockers are with me, and my eye gazes on their provocation. Lay down now a pledge for me with yourself, who is there that will be my guarantor, for you have kept their heart from understanding, therefore you will not exalt them. He who informs against friends for a share of the spoil, the eyes of his children also will languish. Amen. Shalom Kari and Nish Orchestra will glorify God with their praise.
Special praise is offered up by Senior Deaconess um, Gina Kim. She has been serving as the soloist of the Performing Arts Committee, and she has been glorifying God with her um, heart-moving um, praises. <laughs> this year now marks the seventh anniversary of her being healed of brain hemorrhage. With a grateful heart, she gives glory to God through her praise. Everything I've enjoyed. Every moment I've spent. Every moment I've walked. Nothing was to be taken for granted, but it was God's grace. The sun rises in the morning, the sun sets in the evening. The fragrance of flowers and the fruits in the autumn. Every moment of the changing season, nothing was to be taken for granted, but it was God's grace. All things were by His grace, by His grace, by His grace, by His boundless grace. Nothing was to be taken for granted in my life. Things were by His grace. The fact that I'm born on this earth from my childhood until now, the fact that I'm breathing and having a dream. As God's children, the fact that I'm praising and worshiping God, the f the blessing of sharing the gospel, nothing was to be taken for granted in my life, but they were all by God's grace. All things were by God's grace, by God's grace. By His boundless grace, nothing was to be taken granted in my life. All things were by His grace. All thing, all things were by His grace. By His grace. By His grace, by His boundless grace, nothing was to be taken granted from my life. All things were by His grace, by His grace. All things were by His grace, by His grace. By His boundless grace, nothing was to be taken granted for in my life. All things were by His grace. All things were by His grace.
things well by his grace. Active senior pastor will deliver a message on lectures on Job 43. I thank the senior deaconess unit for your praise. You remember the moments when you were healed, and if you keep that grace and make that grace greater, you overflow with more gratitude. And in, I hope you remember those moments. Let me introduce today's off prayer offering. It's offered up by Overseas Branch Church. We give all thanks and glory to God, to Trinity, who has protected us until the 22nd anniversary. Let us meet the living God. When we were wandering in the pitch dark world, our senior pastor guided us through the words of life. And we also thank his active senior pastor who is happily guiding my men with a mess powerful message and power. We want to change ourselves quickly and achieve sincere heart and perfect faith and participate in this precious ministry and give glory to God. Last week, we had an Easter performance. I hope... I, I thank all those who participated in the uh, performance. We certainly changed our location, and I thank all the staff who dedicated themselves to preparing, and all MAMI members. We thank all, all MAMI members. I thank those who came to Daejeon. Actually, t e j e o n m a m i Church is broader than you see on the screen, but because we have to set up a stage, uh, because we have to set up a stage, um, so there was a, only a limited number of people could uh, come, come into that uh, sanctuary. I hope that you have a spirit-filled time in your uh, respective places. And I received reports that many people uh, received grace in many parts of the world. I also, no matter the circumstance, no matter the We, we should keep our faith. We also have hope for a resurrection. That's why we could praise joyfully. I, and I think the Father God poured out His grace greater than ever before. I, I mean, you know, more than we prepared, Father God poured out His grace. So, it's not that we did, but Father God did. We thank our Father God, who is good, we gather together and worship and praise. Brothers and sisters, in the last session, I talked about how worthless our pride is. From the Aesop's fables, there is a deer who, was, who boasted of his beautiful horn, but he was ashamed of his uh, weak legs. When a lion chased this deer, this deer could run away with his legs, but the horn, which she has been boasting of, got stuck in the branches, and she became prey to lions. Likewise, men have their horns, which they boast of, like fame, authority, wealth, and appearance. But we have to know that this horn can give birth to arrogance and misfortune. But our short, we can humble ourselves through our shortcomings and improve ourselves. So we have to cast off our horn of pride, horn of arrogance, and become a humble person. people who, with whom God is pleased. God had the story of Job recorded in the Bible in detail in order to let us discover the sinful natures in us, cast it off, 
uh, and achieve sanctification. Thus, I hope that you, based on this word, you discover, um, examine yourself, cast off evil, and replace it with goodness. From today's passage, we can tell how severe the pain of Job's heart was. He said in chapter 16, verse 16, My face is flushed from weeping, and deep darkness is on my eyelids. Job wept with pain from boils and the grief of losing all his children and being neglected and forsaken by his wife and friends. Moreover, because his pride was badly hurt, he was severely distressed and wept again and again. As he wept a lot, his face became reddish and he got bloodshot eyes. As he felt so empty, his eyelids looked lifeless, like deep darkness was on them. Instead of tearfully lamenting, he should have come before the Almighty God. Then, God would have solved his problems. But Job failed to rely on God and just wept, giving up on himself. The reason was, he lacked experience of meeting God and had only knowledge-based faith. He was a man of flesh without hope. Brothers and sisters, what kind of tears do we have to shed as true believers of God? We have to shed tears of mourning for pitiful souls, tears of repentance in regretting our sins, tears of resolution to renew ourselves, and tears of joy and gratitude for God's grace. Even if you are so grieved, uh, you shouldn't shed tears of lamenting. Instead, we have to shed tears of joy and thanksgiving. God's children with true faith and hope would stay joyful and thankful in any trials and tribulations and win victory with prayer. As we can see, people with spiritual faith and those without it are exceedingly different. In the following confession he made, Job still insists on his being righteous and reasonable. He said, in, he said in chapter 16, verses 17 and 18, Although there is no violence in my hands, and my prayer is pure, O earth, do not cover my blood, and let there be no resting place for my cry. Job claimed that there was no violence in his hands. As Job said, it was true that there was no violence in his hands. What's in man's heart is revealed as these, but Job's evil wasn't strong to the point it was revealed as these. Yet, he poured out a lot of evil through his lips. which indicates that his heart hadn't been changed in the truth. Job also asserted that his prayer was, his prayer was pure, which demonstrates that he still hadn't realized how inappropriate the words he had spoken were. Job went on to say, O earth, do not cover my blood. Because Job thought of himself as righteous and pure, he told the earth not to cover his blood. He also said, Let there be no resting place for my cry. In saying so, Job asked the earth to let him keep crying. When worldly people suffer something unfair, they insist on their being right, saying like, Even heaven and earth know it. Likewise, Job used such a figurative expression in describing his circumstance. By the way, God's children don't have to use an expression like, even heaven and earth know it. The reason is, God knows every, everything, as we find in Psalm chapter 139, verses 1 through 4. O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you understand my thumb from afar. You, scrut you scrutinize my path and my lying down and are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all. 
Moreover, as we read in Hebrews chapter 4 verses 12 and 13, for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of our soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. With the word of God, we can discern whether we are right or wrong. People say, heaven knows, and earth knows, but they don't have to say that. But Father God knows everything. Well, You know, when you also look at yourself in light of truth, you yourself can see yourself, examine yourself. That's, as we take a close look at it, as we take a close look into our heart with the Word, we can discover and cast off our sins and evil. As much as we do so, our soul prospers and we enjoy good health and have all things go well. No one can hide anything before God. At times, we may be misunderstood by people who are unfailingly get judged and condemned. But since God knows all things, when the time comes, the truth is to be revealed for sure. Thus, what's really important is how we conduct ourselves before God, even if it seems that we suffer a loss at the moment and find things unfair. As we commit all things to God and obey, He will be delighted and cause all things to work together for good. Yet, many believers fail to rely on and trust in this God. Instead, they express complaints to people around them and say how unfair everything is. And they say, and, and they explain themselves to people who, you know, Job also, Job also insists on his being right. But as we listen to others' words, we have to discern things. And, and Job wept because his friends didn't seem to understand him. But even though another, other people understand, that doesn't mean th th his, souls, his problems can be solved. This is not tr true faith, and this is not... They lack faith in God and cannot find the cause of their problems from themselves. So, even with the passing of time, the problem remains res unresolved. The worldly people live so. When they have one of their problems uh, solved, they are happy, but most of them cannot solve their problems because they cannot find its cause. And they, uh, but believers of God shouldn't complain to other people. You know, you, you shouldn't. So we have to look at ourselves with the Word of God and discover our shortcomings and repent of them. Then our problems can be gone. John went on to say in chapter 16, verse 19, Even now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and my advocate is on high. A witness is a person who gives a testimony. An advocate is somebody who pleads for you. Here, Job intended to say that the one who would prove his innocence and vouch for him was on high, in heaven. He meant that there was none who would save him or resolve his problems on this earth, and that if there was one, it would be God alone. He also mentioned in chapter 16, verses 20 through 22, Uh, uh, hearing what Job said, we, we may think God, he relied on God, but his ten, intention was not that. Uh, what Job meant to say that because God does not resolve my problem, he is bad. 
So we have to understand uh, his word from the context. Job still didn't realize his faults. He also mentioned in chapter 16, verses 20 through 22, My friends are my scoffers, my eyes whips to God. Oh, that a man might plead with God as a man with his neighbor. For when a few years are passed, I shall go the way of no return. This may sound like Job, uh, Job only relied on God, but that's not the case. Because his friends, wife, relatives, and even his servants were mocking Job, he made such confessions. Job thought that his friends were scoffing at him, but, his, but in his friends' eyes, Job was so wrong. That's why they reacted that way. Job and his friends said to each other, from, from Job's position, I mean, but Job's friends thought that they were, you know, they, they insist on their being right before each other. Job and his friends said to each other, I'm right, you're wrong, you're ignoring me. Also, Job's friends, they felt uh, ignored. That's why their advice turned to rebuke and then turned to curse. At this, they should have discerned with the words of truth rather than insisting on themselves being right. Also, Job pleaded with God with tears, but this wasn't. But this wasn't. But this wasn't a right way to ask God. The Word of God tells us to rejoice, pray, give thanks, and ask God with faith. But contrary to this, Job shed tears before God in resentment, lamentation. condemnation, and judgment. You know, it's okay to uh, shed tears of lamentation of repenting. Like, as you say, because I committed sin, I c r u f i c e the Lord again. Please forgive me. Such tears of lamentation are accepted by God, but Job's tears were not so. And when we, we sh- use, make such confessions and shed such tears, Satan works and, and your diseases are intensified. Job was doing so, as we can see. But what about our life? As we shed tears, you know, when we praise, we shed tears. But the meaning of tears is important. You have to examine the meaning of your tears because you are so distressed because you are in pain and no one can help you because you are are like Job. But our Father doesn't accept the tears of complaint. But if you truly lower and humble yourself, saying, I, it's all my fault, I condemned him, I judged him, I, fors- I forsaken your love, if you discover yourself and thoroughly repent and turn from your ways and dwell in the light, then Satan, Satan's works are gone with God's working for you, you, things will be turned into blessings and answers. Because Job had always insisted on his being right, he wanted to plead for all his problems. He said he was right, but God didn't acknowledge my being right. He granted me hardship. And 
Here, to plead is in the context of making something clear by specifically discerning between things. I mean, Job wanted to plead for all his problems. A, a man that Job mentions here is somebody who has extraordinary uprightness and righteousness, discerning between righteousness and goodness, and keeping the duty of man. Job says he wants to plead with all those who know him, namely a man, his neighbors, and all those who heard the news and knew him. Job was saying like, I don't have to be treated like a sinner. Knowing that they would think of him as a sinner punished by God, Job wanted to give explanations for that. But as I told you earlier, when we suffer something unfair, we have to commit all things to God who knows everything, rather than given excuses. In the churches, sometimes people have different opinions and misunderstandings. We shouldn't let this happen. But anyway, sometimes people insist on their being right and they also uh, act rudely to others and uh, people are misunderstood and, uh, and, and then how do you resolve the problem? Do you do you want to track down the person who misunderstood you? And if you track him down, uh, do you want to argue, argue against with them? And, and do you want to? Do you do you want to say? But instead, have you kept silent, thinking? Father God does everything, so I have to uh, reflect on myself, and I have to think what caused her. And you didn't, even though, but, but as you repent of these things, like, Father God, because I have narrow-mindedness, I'm in distress and agony, please help me have a broader heart. As you pray like this, you have to uh, follow goodness that pleases God. Then you've scored almost a perfect point. Then, so you have to after a while you will be blessed but even if you listen to this message when you feel misunderstood when you feel like you are misunderstood when people exas exaggerate your faults when people distort the truth then you may want to you may want to complain to pe before people around you and you don't end there you gossip about another person so what is the reason that we listen to this gospel of holiness we have to advance to a better dwelling place or are you taking the broad path you shouldn't do so from Job's confession we have to look back on ourselves how we looked yesterday and uh, we have to we have to so you can check whether while we live in this world we sometimes are misunderstood sometimes people make up stories and give us false charges but God knows everything but we are very we, uh, we feel very secure because we have our God 
I once confessed, because we have God, the Lord and Shepherd, we are living. I mean, because we have our Father God, because we hold on to Him, we shouldn't feel resentful, because Father God resolved all the resentful things, so we can stay in peace. peace. So, take a look at my face. Do I look concerned? Do I look uh, peaceful? Anyway, you know, for the Easter performance, I don't, you know, sometimes I couldn't, I thought about receiving a massage for a uh, even so because Father God surrounds us with His light of grace we are spirit filled once we are spirit filled everything looks beautiful you know Because I rely on this God uh, in my ministry, I don't rely on worldly ways, worldly methods. But with Father God holding on to me, we are very thankful. So in your life, we have to check whether you are relying on man or God or worldly ways. So not only before problems, but but. Even about your ill feelings, uh, the troubles with others, I hope you commit all things to Him. But the problem is, we have to become a person whom God can be resp- take responsible for. In the past, as Job said, for when a few years are past, I shall go the way of no return. As Job was struggling in great anguish and despair, he felt like his life would end after a while or a few years. He couldn't estimate when his suffering would end. This is the reason that he affirmed that he would go the way of destruction. Uh, He would go the way of no return. But through the Word of God, you and I know where we came from, where we are headed. We know how we are blessed or cursed during our life on this earth and that even though we are in the middle of the valley of shadow of death, if we keep our faith, we can experience God's land of salvation. Since we have hope for the glory and joy that we will enjoy with our Lord in heaven after this earthly life is over, we never despair in any circumstances and daily win victory by faith. Even if we might face death while living such a Christian life, we won't feel dejected or tormented because we will go to our true home we've longed for. But people without faith are severely distressed and frightened when they find themselves in a death-like situation or nearing the end of their life. Not knowing God the Creator and lacking hope for heaven, they cannot but feel how vain life is and as they are nearing death. Job was also aware of God, but as he lacked hope for heaven, every confession he made indicated how empty and dejected he was. That's why he said in chapter 17, verse 1, My spirit is broken, my days are extinguished, the grave is ready for me. He became increasingly worn out, struggling with frustration and anguish, in giving up on himself, in giving up on himself, he he confessed that his spirit was broken. It's not that Job Um, in his own thoughts he thought that his life was over Uh, when a person has experienced repeated failures and hit the rock bottom of of his life people say that he has no chance of getting back up but only death awaits him in the process of I mean some people You know, when you are distressed because of your family member, you may have said, death awaits awaits me. But not just in uh, the physical world. Uh, 
there are people who even some of you may get tired and feel overwhelmingly afflicted in the process of fiercely fighting against sins to become sanctified. At this point, you may affirm, I can never become sanctified. But we find in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, holding to a form of godliness, although they have desired, denied His power, avoid such men of these, uh, avoid such men as these. We cannot cast off sins and become sanctified by our, by our own strength and power. We need grace and strength from God and help from the Holy Spirit along with our own efforts. Only then can we fight against and overcome sins. We have to acknowledge His power of godliness and rely on God. But as people, try, as people rely on their efforts alone, not God, they get tired out and in frustration. They even deny the power of godliness. But the power of godliness comes from God, so we should never deny it. You know, some say, I've tried to sanctify myself, but even those who used to have good faith are in despair. So, does that make you give up on your race of faith? You thought, that people lost their faith, so I could also lose my faith. You shouldn't give that excuse. You are giving up on yourself because you shouldn't. Some people also say, I prayed and tried, made efforts, but evil continues to come out. When can I change myself really? But, but you shouldn't make but shouldn't re 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 rely on yourself but rely on God but pe some people get weary but after they make efforts to some point they want to stop it's, it's difficult for them to uh, continue their efforts so after they grow to some point they want to rest if they stop their faith can be gone but people are, have a tendency to rest but we have to every moment we have to che check our hearts and mind and thoughts if we once we make a habit of doing that it does not it is not difficult but until it became our habit if we So, we have to check whether we have made confessions in despair. Other people also deny the Christian life they have lived. How foolish that is. If you have done so, you have to thoroughly repent. Even though you cannot do that, Father God can do it. out in the world as for a person who has enjoyed smoking and drinking for decades it's not easy to quit them even if he, do, even if he resolves to quit them for his health and makes efforts by the way even such people once they come to church by someone's guidance with God's grace of come up, coming upon them they can instantly quit smoking and drinking we've heard of such testimonies a lot realizing that the power of godliness is from God we have to rely on Him in all circumstances. John went on to say in chapter 17, verse 2, Surely mockers are with me, and my eye gazes on the provocation. Here, Job is complaining that his friends mocked him rather than comforting him. Job said so, not knowing that they were provoked by the words he had spoken. While not acknowledging his faults, Job was agonized to see his friends provoked. As we can see, even after people cause another person concerns by their mistakes or wrong wrongdoings, they often act in a blatant manner. Even though other people are provoked, they don't understand it. Let's say you borrowed, let's say you borrowed money from someone, but due to some situation, 
you fail to pay it off at the designated time. But uh, at this point, even if the person who lent you money gets angry and curses at you, you have no words to respond with. Because you suffer the shame as a result of provoking that person, you have no reason to feel hurt. You committed a fault in the first place, and you hurt his feelings, so you are to blame. Because you failed to keep the promise, you have to feel apologetic from your heart and ask for forgiveness. But if you say like, you've gone too far, how come you are so provoked? This is not an opportunity to deal with the situation. Rather than considering the provoked person evil, you have to know that it is more evil of you not to feel apologetic. Once you've promised something to someone, you have to make sure to keep it and not distress them. If you've broken your promise, you have to willingly endure his provoked reaction and ask for forgiveness. Most of all, it is important that you act wisely to prevent such things from happening in the first place and keep the other person from being provoked. Thus, if you long for goodness, I urge you to put yourself in other's shoes instead of considering only your positions in all affairs. Rather than thinking, I'm annoyed, how could they do this to me? Um, how could they do this to me? By, I mean, you should try to figure out why they're upset and angry and understand their positions and feelings. In doing so, you can keep peace. You know, when another person provokes you with their faults, when another person agonizes you, you also have to remember today's uh, verse. I, I mean, but you have to forgive that person. Uh, are, you have to calm your, uh, control your feelings and deal with others in goodness and love. He said it uh, in, in the following verse, Job again appealed to God. He said in chapter 17, verse 3, Lay down now a pledge for me with yourself. He who, who is there that will be my guarantor? A pledge is a guarantee for something, which means somebody will take the full responsibility for something. Job is asking God to make a pledge to him and be his guarantor. In doing so, Job asked God to vouch for his innocence, thereby resolving his problems. Job was not politely asking God to uh, resolve his problems, but Job was saying like, I have no fault, but you distress me by giving me problems. So please, approve, uh, acknowledge my innocence and resolve my problems. That's what was Job That's what, was, what Job was saying. Job asked God to save him from the current crisis and become his master. A person struggling with debts desperately looks for a guarantor to have him stand shorty for his debts and resolve his problems. Likewise, Job was crying to God with a desperate heart. Job's words bore his bitter anguish. When they have a problem, unbelievers of God search for a guarantor to resolve it in man's ways, namely, fleshly ways. But if they manage, if they manage to find a guarantor who's got money, if their problem remains unresolved financially, they are again subjected to the guarantor. That's why they have to solve their problems on their own. Moreover, we, believers, shouldn't get ourselves a guarantor in the face of a problem and subject ourselves to Him, because God is our Father and He will certainly offer to become our guarantor. Therefore, we shouldn't say like, God, please be my guarantor. We don't have to say that. We have become His daughter's sons and daughters, so He is already our master. Therefore, we shouldn't say like, 
God, please be my guarantor, but commit things to the Almighty God who is only our guarantor and ask Him with faith. We have to commit things to Him and He will take care of them and we have to pray so that He can hear. But if we don't do so, this is a problem. If we rely on man, not God, our God cannot help us but only watches us from the back with a regrettable heart. We have to We have to know why you are in trouble and turn back and repent. This is how you make God your father and you make God your... uh, You may say, even after you pray, you live opposite to your prayer and you find a solution from fleshly ways. Then how could you How could God respond to your prayer? The life that Father God wants to lead is to discover our wrongdoings. If we have gone the wrong way, we have to turn our steps and walk the right way. We have to... God wants wants us to turn our steps back onto the right way, thoroughly repent of our wrongdoings, and fix ourselves. Because Job still considered himself right, he didn't think about how he would turn from his wrong ways. Instead, he cried hard, searching for a guarantor, like he was trying to catch a wind. Many Christians are leading such a Christian life. They say, Father, please help me. The Lord, help me. You are my everything. They pray and praise like that. But they live just as they please. So God cannot help them. Job also, it looks like he desperately asked for God. But from from the context, he continue to you have to know what, how you have been doing Father God is already our Father so we have to check whether we are asking Him well whether we are repenting or Job also said like who is he that he will strike hands with me as Job thought over his situation he found out that no one could drive him into such a swamp of hardships and that it was only God who could make that ha- this happen that's why he made a statement still Job was blaming God for his problems Job claimed that God gave him hardships. Even though he asked God to resolve his problems, he actually was not asking God to help him. He was just blaming blaming God for his problems. This was his problem. You, when you meet with problems, I I know that you never say things like, God has struck struck me. Because you know the truth well, you never say that. But some Christians who believe in God make uh, say such things. When they get a disease, they say like, God has struck me, God has given me disease. They make confessions like Job. But these expressions are not right. First, you have to look back on yourself, discover your wrongdoings, and repent. You shouldn't make God describe describe God as a bad one, saying like, God has struck me. Job went on to say in chapter 70, verse 4, For you have kept their heart from understanding, therefore you will not exalt them. Job meant that even though he taught them with wise words, they didn't have an awakening, but rather let out evil and that God caused all this to happen. Such expressions are appeared uh, several and Job is making such comments Uh, so Job said that God wouldn't acknowledge them and he himself wouldn't admit admit their words but this statement of Job was wrong 
If Job had received God-given wisdom and talked with them in goodness, they wouldn't have been provoked. But as Job spoke out of evil feelings and his wisdom, he was subject to Satan's work, and his friends also responded out of ill feelings. But without acknowledging his faults, Job made absurd claims before God. He told God not to exalt his friends who bothered and scolded him, but acknowledged that their words were not right. What an outrageous demand this is. What about your life? When someone distresses you, when someone bothers you, have you said things like, God, that is a bad person? What, you wouldn't say this directly to God, but you would find people around you and say such things. And you describe him as bad to people around you. And, and Job said to God that his friends were bad, God, bad ones. We wouldn't dare say such evil words to God because we have learned the truth. But you have to check yourself. Even though, uh, I mean, when someone distressed you, did you, did you gossip about them? Did you, did you make others misunderstand them? Did you make others... Uh, think of him as, as bad ones? Uh, you have to know how evil that, you know, Job made absurd claims before God and they were evil. And Job told God not to acknowledge them. But what about our life? What about ourselves? When we hate someone, we, when we, we speak ill of others and make others think of him as bad person. We have to remove such evil from ourselves. No matter, even if another person misunderstands you, Father God knows this, and Father God will resolve problems. We have to act in a way that is pleasing to God, but we shouldn't uh, In saying that God kept his friends from having an awakening, Job judged God to be a bad one and completely ignored his friends. In the following verse, Job bitterly cursed his friends. He said in chapter 17, verse 5, He who informs against friends for a share of the spoil, the eyes of his children also will languish. This is appalling. Job had been severely insulted and distressed by his friends. In response, he cursed them, saying their children's eyes would languish. He didn't ponder over why he had to be rebuked by his friends. Rather, he scolded and cursed them. This is because Job had l i k e faith and hadn't understood true love. Seeing how Job acted here, we can understand well enough why he had to go through trials. Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verses 27 and 28, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. While God tells us to love even our enemies, we shouldn't hate those who are not even our enemies, particularly our brothers in faith. Though it is not easy to bless someone who curses us with spiritual love, we are more than able to do that. As we achieve a spiritual heart, we see even on those we see even. Those, we see even those who curse us as pitiful. That's why we can mourn for Him in prayer. 
Even as Stephen, even as Deacon Stephen was being stoned to death after proclaiming God's will, he didn't say a single word of complaint to those who stoned him. Rather, he knelt down and asked God to forgive them with a loud voice. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. The reason was, he possessed the utmost level of goodness and perfect love by which he could offer even his life for the evil. God wants us to reach such levels of goodness and love. Although Job was complimented as a blameless and upright man, when someone attacked him, he attacked him back. Therefore, to change Job's deed and law-oriented goodness into true goodness, Job, God refined him that way. As God gave Job fiery trials to make him into a man of spirit, He poured out evil on a tremendous scale. As His friends attacked Job, He attacked them back even harder. Through trials, God had the evil hidden in Job's heart revealed. But since Job had to discover and completely cast off evil to win God's recognition, love, and blessings, God refined him. If athletes could get a gold medal even without being harshly trained, they wouldn't be willing to undergo rigorous training. And coaches would feel no need to train the athletes. Neither would the athletes want to receive training. But since they are required to go through training to win medals, they willingly endure the training no matter how severe that is. In Job's case as well, God was refining him to make him into a vassal that is truly worthy of blessings. But even in cases where God refines us to give us blessings, the evil hidden in ourselves are revealed. Because there has been evil in us, it is revealed through trials. It is not that God suddenly creates evil that hasn't even been there. Let's say, in your workplace, your boss compliments one of your colleagues. At this point, if you think, he is not better than me, but why does he compliment him? You have to check how much evil there is in your heart. Even though though your boss didn't rebuke you, you feel resentful with envy and jealousy stirred up in you and you agonize yourself. Like this, as long as you have evil in heart, even after we see something good, we let out evil. Job cursed his friends, saying that his children's eyes would languish. What does this mean? Spiritually, eyes signify the future. When a person cannot see, it's like his way is blocked and confined. Therefore, saying to someone that his eyes would languish is one of the greatest curses. Moreover, in a family, children serve as the stem that keeps the family going. By saying that their eyes would languish, Job gave them a tremendous curse. Not relenting by this, Job also spoke cursing words. Brothers and sisters, I want you to examine whether you've also acted that way. Let's say you are offended and hurt by someone's words and actions. In turn, you hold a grudge and want to get even with them. This is what worldly people would do, and it is evil. As you do so, you cannot be called God's children. Through the lectures on Job, I want you to examine your words, these, heart, and mind. Discover all your evil and quickly cast it off. Let me conclude a message. Brothers and sisters, two parallel lines never meet, no matter how much time passes. Likewise, people who insist on their opinions are like this. If Job had accepted his friend's advice, his problems would already have been resolved. But because of Job's pride and stubborn heart, he only insists on his being right, so his trials are prolonged. If you love the Lord, you wouldn't argue with anyone, you wouldn't raise your voice, but keep, you would want to keep peace. But people argue over trivial matters and break peace because they seek their own benefits, they seek their own but we have to adjust ourselves to others unless it is something untruth. Even though it seems we make a loss at the moment,
Even if it seems that we make a loss, it brings joy to God, so we end up receiving blessings and answers. Just as salt loses its form to, to give its taste, you have to cast off yourself feelings, benefit, pride, and righteousness and resemble the heart of the Lord that is sacrificial and yielding. You have to stand before, boldly before the Lord and be complimented as His dear bride. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let's reflect on today's message in our prayer. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's receive the senior pastor prayer for the sick. Lay your hands on the sick parts. If you are not sick, lay your hands on your chest and receive the prayer with a heart's desire. Hallelujah, Almighty God, our loving Father. Please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works that transcend time and space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN, Internet, and Satellite TV, in branch churches and local sanctuaries, and all other children of God around the world. Give them the faith to believe from heart, drive away negative thoughts and doubts, and drive away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all entrails, joints and nerves and tissues and cells, whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses and infirmities go away, light come. Please scorch all their terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases including malaria. All contagious diseases, including cold, flu, and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of all stomach, lung, liver, breast, uterine, and intestinal cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high and low blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problems, and heart, lung, and women's diseases, and all inflammations go away. Heal them of polio, stroke, arthritis, and herniated discs. Back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened, get up, walk, and leap. Let the eyes see well, let the ears hear well, let the blind come to see, the deaf to hear, and the mute to speak. Heal them up after effects of all kinds of accidents, fix their broken bones, restore them from burns, let the heat and burning sensation go away. Father, let there be no skull left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse. Let the dead nerves and tissues and cells be regenerated, bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessing of conception. Receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the power of the air, the evil forces of heavenly places and their servants, go away. Go away, evil, unclean, false and deceitful spirits, separating spirits, and all forces of darkness, loosen the bonds of wickedness. Darkness, go away, light come. Father God, give them strength to cry out in prayer and the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. As their souls prosper, let all things go well with them and let their families be vandalized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. 
with the fiery walls of the Holy Spirit, heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children, their families, workplaces, and business fields. Give students wisdom and understanding, and give them enthusiasm and fervor to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from holy things and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or in whatever they do, let them do it all to live a life glorifying you, Father God. Let them be able to testify about the living God, saying, I've met and experienced God and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let's sing together, Mommy. Praise number uh, 246 and present our offerings. Uh, now we will begin the awards ceremony of the Easter Egg Decoration Contest. 43 teams in Korea and, uh, presented their work and grand prize, silver prize, and bronze prize will be given and overseas members will also receive gold, silver, and bronze uh, prizes. First, Korean Active Center Pastor will award the prize to them. Attention, bow. Popularity Prize, Ichon Branch Sanctuary. The cash award. And the encouragement prize theme closer and closer to the cross. Cash award. Theme the train to heaven. The Chinese parish theme, the Pearly Gates. Congratulations. And eighth parish theme, oh, five petal flowers um, blooming in the heaven. 
Next, the Chuncheon Mamin Church. Theme, the grace of the Lord. Congratulations. Next, the bronze prize, the Chinese parish. Theme, the revival of Ma Min. The silver prize. Theme, dwelling places in heaven. There will be, she will be given a cash award. Next, the gold prize, the great Chinese parish. Theme, the world be united as one in Ma Min. Next, the grand prize. Grand prize. Theme, being changed by the gospel of holiness. Cash award will be given. Attention and bow to active senior pastor. Turn around to bow to the congregation. Please go back to your seats. And overseas members, Forty-two teams from twelve countries have participated. We thank all overseas members who participated. Bronze uh, prize from Malaysia, Mamin Church. Theme: Jesus performed signs and wonders. Silver silver prize. Mahesh from Indo India Delhi Mamin Church. Theme. Father God's heart for us. Next, gold prize. Jonathan Ortiz from Columbia Mami Church. Theme, triumphal entry. Next, grand prize. Sogamoso Mami Church from Columbia. Theme, the coming of the Lord. On behalf of the members, Elder Samuel came from the uh, overseas team, mission team, who received the award. This is the awards ceremony for the Easter egg um, decorating contest. Activation pastor will pray for the offerings. We, I thank all those who participated in the contest from 12 countries. In um, overseas members also participated. You may not see how great that is well, from the pictures, but later you will see videos of them. You know, the process of making, decorating the Easter egg help you. Oh, please visit our website to especially the, the works from the overseas. Um, overseas members decorated the eggs in a little bit different way, so I felt that I hope that you will have I thank all those who participated in the contest I also thank the Women's Mission members Father God we give tithes, thanksgiving, charity, support and Sunday offerings as well as for missionary works also we give sanctuaries, construction, vows, special and holy 
rice offerings. Father God, please accept them and lay your hands on them so that a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over may be poured into our lap. Please fulfill our h e a r t s desires and answer our prayers and petitions. Please protect our homes, work, and businesses. Bless us so that our times will increase and the reasons for thanksgiving may overflow. Also, bless us 30, 60, or 100 times according to what we've done and sown. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. It's time to welcome the newly registered members. Your children have registered in the church, the body of Christ. Please seal them in heaven as sheep of Mommy Central Church. Please let their souls prosper, everything go well, and be healthy and spirited in body. Please let them stand on the rock of faith. Give them strength, grace, and the fullness of the Holy Spirit to overcome the world. Bless them to eagerly seek and meet and experience and give glory to you. May they love you, be loved by you, and lead them to your kingdom. Thank you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. We welcome them in our Lord's name. Let's finish the service with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 영원히 있사옵나이다. 아멘.